Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming uh, friendly and friendly to project session. So my name is Masa, a friendly developer at Treasure Data. Uh, in this session, I talk about the friendly overview and architecture and use cases for new friendly users. And Eduardo will talk about the friendly bit in the second part. Okay, let's start. The first is our friendly overview. Friendly is designed for the streaming data collection. So this means Friendly continues to read data from data sources and write data to the destinations in streaming manner. Uh, Friendly consists of the core part and the plugin part. So Friendly Core provides important features for data collection, and the plugins part uh, covers actual use cases. So for example, so reading data from the data sources and writing data to the databases. The Friendly is written in Ruby with C extension, and Friendly uses Ruby gems for the plugin de uh, distribution. So we can use whole Ruby ecosystem for plugin development. The whole setup, uh, we provide uh, several approaches. So for example, so Friendly community provides the OS packages like the RPM dev and MSI packages. So you can run Friendly on Linux and Windows. Of course, uh, friendly committee provides the container images for the uh, Docker and the Kubernetes demo set. Uh, friendly and Friendly is a logging part in CNCF. So Kubernetes and related products uh, use Friendly and Friendly for the data correction. Friendly also is CNCF products. Uh, so for example, Friendly has a Prometheus plugin and it exposes Friendly metrics to the uh, Prometheus. Hey, this is one example of the streaming data collection for the local files. In this case, uh, Friendly monitors log files. So when application writes logs to the local files, uh, Friendly reads logs immediately and sends logs to the central log server with low latency. So the merit of this approach is no need to wait all data are logged in the local files. So you can see the newer logs quickly in log server via dashboard or other tools. On production, so we have lots of uh, logs and collect it for the businesses. For example, so collecting service logs or system logs, and these logs are used in the uh, KPI or machine learning or service monitoring or more. So we need to handle various log types on the real world. Currently, has a plugin architecture for solving this problem. We can build a unified logging layer with Fluentd. Uh, Fluentd is a glue in your data pipeline. So we can collect data from any data sources and send data to any destinations. Okay, next is our Fluentd architecture. Again, so Fluentd consists of the core part and the plugin parts. And this page shows the details of the uh, Fluentd design. Friendly Core provides several important features for data collection. For example, plugins don't need to implement the complicated buffering or retrying mechanism in each, each implementation. If out of the plugin hits the temporal failure, the Friendly automatically retries the error until success. In addition, so Friendly provides uh, several helpers for popular routines, so selecting timer, uh, set up HTTP server, and more. The plugin developers can focus on implementing the core logic of the plugin by using the helpers. So this is why Friendly has lots of plugins by the community. And this is a structure of Friendly's one event. Friendly event consists of the three elements, tag and time and record. For example, so if you have an Apache logs, so one log line is converted into this structure. The tag is used for the event routing and identifying the data sources. The important point is the actual log content is converted into the JSON object, so not the raw story. JSON object is easy to mutate or easy to filter in and easy to transform to the other formats, so CSV or other binary formats. So in addition, so popular middlewares and uh, uh, recent web services can accept the JSON object natively. So this is why Friendly uses a JSON object for event record. 
Okay, this image uh, shows the event processing flow in Fluent D. So incoming events pass through this pipeline from the right to left. So let's check the each component. Okay, input plugin is a start point of the data pipeline. The input plugin receives, receives or is data from the data sources and emit logs to the data pipeline. The important point is input plugin passes logs for the structured logging. The logs are converted into friendly event in input plugin. Okay, filter plugin is simple. Uh, filter over muted events. So, for example, so adding a host name to event record, uh, or check the condition to ignore unnecessary logs. Of course, front plugin could be chained, so you can apply multiple filters to the data streams. Buffer plugin is used inside the output plugins, so not standalone. Incoming events are stored into buffer before write to destinations. Buffer plugin is the core of robust buffering and literal mechanism for the output plugin. So if you use file buffer, data are stored on the past sent disk. This avoids data loss even when frequently really crashes. So we recommend to use the file buffer on production. Output plugin is very simple, so just send data to the destinations. This picture also shows the how Fluentd handles data streams. In Fluentd, data streams are split into small chunks. This approach makes a retry cheaper and easy to recover, unlike the large batch model. So with small chunks, so we can easy to process data concurrently. This approach also improves the latency between the data sources and the destination. This is the merit of the streaming data collection and why Fluentd uses a streaming approach. Okay, the community uh, releases uh, lots of input plugins, so you can collect the uh, data from the uh, databases or data services or other monitoring tools. And the community also releases uh, lots of output plugins, so you can send the data to the, any databases, uh, data object storage, and web services. So you can easy to handle various data sources and destinations by the plugins. Next, uh, we show the popular use cases. This is a simple use case. So use Fluently for data collection from multiple data sources. Uh, read local files and receive data from the application. And Fluently sends data to the uh, databases, so like MongoDB or RDBMS. This is a configuration example for these use cases. So the configuration syntax is Apache-like format. A source directive for the input plugin and the match directive for the output plugin. This example doesn't have a filter plugin example, sorry. We mentioned so match directive as a tag pattern for the event routing. So in this case, so events from tail input plugin has the app prefix tag. So these events are stored into the MongoDB. Friendly also supports the multiple destination, so you can send the data to the different destinations for different purposes. So in this example, so use Elasticsearch for real-time dashboard, and use Hadoop HDFS for batch and archive purposes. And Friendly uh, supports multi-tier model with original forwarding protocol. Currently, forward protocol supports the two delivery semantics, so at most once or at least once, um, high availability and load balancing for multiple aggregators. This multi tier model is mainly for high traffic environment. If you are interested in this model, uh, check the link on this page. Okay, last part. I talk about the container and the front D. Friendly is widely used in the container logging, so I will talk about how to collect logs for the correct uh, containers. First, uh, I show the several resources for the container logging. So for Docker, uh, we provide the uh, Alpine and Debian images. 
So we recommend to use the Debian images of production because the Debian images works with the system and the JMALOC. We use JMALOC to optimize the memory usage. For Kubernetes, we provide the demo set setting and images for the popular destinations. So Elasticsearch or Kafka and other destinations supported by the uh, official repository. In addition, so Helm official repository provides a stable friendly chart. So you can run friendly on popular platforms with these resources. Okay, next is uh, we shall, uh, we talk about how to collect logs from containers. And this is a Docker use cases. Docker has a logging driver for sending logs to the external systems, and Docker supports friendly logging driver by default. So you can send application logs to the friendly using logging driver. The merit is uh, no need to write additional code to your application. And in friendly side, you can use friendly input plugin to receive logs from Docker. This is Docker specific approach, but easy to use. No need to uh, modifying your application. The second approach is using friendly Logger library. Friend Logger is implemented in each plugin language. This approach is mainly for the application data or metrics. With this approach, you need to add the login code in your application, but you can collect any data with FriendD. And FriendD configuration is the same as Docker login driver. Use Howard Input plugin to receive data from Friend Logger. On Kubernetes, so we use demo set for collecting data from containers. Kubernetes stores container logs into the bar log container directory, and friendly read these logs uh, using Intel plugin. Uh, official friendly demo set images use this approach for log collection. And demo set images include the metadata, metadata filter by default. This filter gets metadata from Kubernetes API server and adds metadata to the uh, event record. For example, host name or container name or pod name are added. So you can use this metadata on a data processing side for the aggregation or data filter. This is a summary of the logging method for the containers. So you can choose these approaches for your needs. So for Docker, uh, logging driver is popular approach, and on, for Kubernetes, so we use Intel plugin for the uh, uh, container log files. Okay, friendly part is finished. Next is a friend bit by Eduardo. Thank you, Masa. Hello, everyone. My name is Eduardo Silva, and I'm one of the maintainers of the Fluent Bit project. Fluentbit is part of the Fluidity ecosystem and it's a project that started around 2015, initially for embedded Linux, but quickly evolved to solve cloud native problems. And it's under Apache license, of course. One of the advantage of Fluentbit in general is that it's written in C language and it is very optimized for a low CPU and low memory footprint. Actually, it already has a pluggable architecture where you can have more than 60 plugins available built in natively in C. So what, this is one of the advantage that when you deploy the agent, you don't need to install a dependencies. And from a data workflow perspective, it's very similar to FluentD. We have an input section where we collect data from, we have the parsers to parse the data and convert from unstructured format to structured format. We have the filtering phase for data enrichment. If you think about Kubernetes, you need to enrich your data with Kubernetes uh, metadata like labels, annotations. We have all this buffering section and routing mechanism to send your data from one place or many others. These kind of destinations or the input source of data, all of them are configured by plugins. And Fluentbit in general, it is made for a high performance at low cost solution. So if you have, for example, you are working in a, in a common cloud environment and you have a very intense application that generates a lot of logs, actually what you want is to have that your agent consume as less fuel as possible. 
but be able to process your data and ship your data and that it's, it's fluent there. In Kubernetes, you can have many nodes, right? A cluster has a master API, you have nodes and you have your applications inside pods. So and this is kind of a scenario, it's, a, it's not that easy to, to process the logs and ship all the logs at once. As Massa said in the previous present in the previous section, he said that yeah, we have all these between D can be deployed as a demo set and can solve the problem. So we follow the same pattern. We are able to be deployed as a demo set and solve all this problem. Imagine that if you have an application that is generating, for example, an Apache web server, it's generating the log messages, right? All of them doesn't have a structure and goes to the file system or goes to journal D. When these messages are generated, for example, if you consider a, that they're using the JSON, the JSON format for the file system, all of them will have, a, every container will have its own specific log file. So the agent needs to be able to correlate all this information together. And that message is not just a message, it also has a string information and the time that when this message was created inside the Kubernetes node, but also it's really important to understand and get the context of the information. That's why a, the API server in Kubernetes provides you extra information for the container or pod that is running in a node, for example, labels or annotations, because at the end, when you do data processing or data analysis, that's the information that you care about because you want to search for all the logs that a, every application that has a label color equals blue, as an example. So a simple message that is start in Kubernetes or as a, in a pod like this becomes something with more content like a, the processed data, right? The Kubernetes metadata, like labels, annotations, the pod name, and so on. So with this, we correlate all the information from the cluster and every record has all the information together. So when you process this is a more straightforward process. And how this works? Internally, FluentBed is deployed as a daemon set, but also can be deployed as a sidecar, sidecar container. It reads the logs from the file system, then it goes to the API server, as I said, to retrieve the metadata, and then to be able to finally push the old data that is correlated to your final destination. Final destination can be any cloud service that is supported or any kind of custom HTTP endpoint. You can use your own Elasticsearch, Kafka, AWS, PostgreSQL, but we have many connectors for your different and favorite backends. So FluentBit was created in 2015. We are close to have a, to turn five years next year. And what is really important here to understand what are the new things that are coming up in the project. So a few weeks ago, we released FluentBit 1.6. And one of the major uh, features set that we ship are the new enterprise connectors. Enterprise, I mean that we connect to this enterprise connector. All of them are for free for use, of course. Uh, it's for the Azure Blob service, where you can send your data to a Blob service, to a Blob or on a pen blob in Azure. Also, we have the new integration for Grafana Loki. And also with Amazon, we just come together with the connector for Amazon S3 and Amazon Firehose. This is not new, at least Loki and Amazon connectors already existed in different image, images provided by Grafana and by AWS, but they implemented the connectors in Golang. This time we migrated all these connectors to C language and we ship all of them by default in the primary distribution of Wendbed. And of course you gain a lot of performance compared to the other versions. That's the major thing here. If you know about filtering, enrich your metadata, you will know that also it's not about enrichment. You also can take some logical decisions like filter your data out or take some action or trigger some alerts. And now if we are going a step forward with that and we're trying to bring all these uh, machine learning, all these capabilities, capabilities for analytics inside the Fluent Bed pipeline. So the ARM team has provided a new filter to run TensorFlow models in Cephalobed. So you can have your data which is processing certain metrics and you can apply a model. And if the model traps deception, I assume that that is the term for that, 
uh, you can trigger some alert or some action. This is not for training inside the pipeline, but just to deploy your models and apply these models on top of your data that is flowing, which is quite powerful and can open many possibilities to do data analysis on the edge. From a community perspective, as of last month in October, we hit 170 million deployments for this year. I think that we are going to close 200 million in the whole year. So this means a huge traction in the project. So and these kind of deployments are happening every day. And, like, and, and this is like crazy, it's like crazy numbers. But if you look carefully, this is thanks to the help of every enterprise company that it's a, a cloud provider or a service provider. Actually, from big, it's been supporting the three major cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft, and others like DigitalOcean, Vice Cloud, and so on. So as a project, it's really important that we keep all this synergy across user, end users, enterprise, the companies, and also the developers. So we try to have all this kind of partnership together because the feedback that you provide also, if you're watching this, this session live on KubeCon, is really important. I would say that 70, 80% of the features that you see in Fluentbit is because of the feedback from users like you. And also, we're looking for how to get better at metrics. So we are working together with the Open Telemetry team to try to integrate together and integrate a better way for them to manage logging through Fluentbit. More about this news, you will get it next year. So this is just a snippet about uh, the work that we're doing together. If you are interested in open telemetry and you care about logs, pay attention to Fluentbit. Well, uh, with Massa, we just finished this introduction presentation and now we have a lot of time for Q&A. So thanks for coming.